Yo, family, kings and queens. Yeah, I'm talking to you. What is your morals? What do you stand for? What is important to you? What are you willing to lay your life down for? Are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to sacrifice? What is the number that you finally say, hey, look, I made it. I'm successful. That's enough. Or are you even willing to say that's enough? Yeah, yeah. Do you understand the difference between complacency and being content? Only taking what you need just enough and leaving the rest for the flock? Or are you greedy and you need it all? Are you humble and hungry? Or are you flashy and flamboyant? What defines you? What is your character? Are you for your people? Or do you feed off of that claim for the fame? Or do you really want to make a change? Are you in it for the right reasons? Do you understand that a lot comes with this? Blood, sweat, and tears. You got to do a service to your people. Whenever you daring to be great, you got to be ready for what comes behind that. Remember, scripture said, to whom much is given, much is expected from. So heavy is the burden of the one that wears the crown. Are you ready to put that crown on? Know that before you do, the road ahead won't be easy. Success won't be easy. You got to be ready for a lot of sleepless nights. You got to be ready to sacrifice a lot of people who ain't willing to make that journey with you. You got to be ready for a lot of people doubting the fact that you can endure the journey that it takes to make it there or just flat out doubting the fact that you can even get there. But me, I think you ready. So pick up your crown and let's make it happen. Day, folks it's your boy king ko back with another video what's happening kings and queens y'all know what we got to get to first first we got to dive into the instagram family so we got to show them some love and first we got young nino nine you know hashtag 500 you know what i'm saying tapping in with us then we got the queen it's angel baby tapping in appreciate you queen then we got rest honcho big honcho you know what I'm saying? Big hot joke, Cholo tapping in. Appreciate you, King. Then we got Funny Guy 2.09. You know what I'm saying? Funny Guy 2.0 tapping in as well. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate you, King, man. Appreciate y'all. All y'all all kings and queens tapping in. You know what I'm saying? Showing your boy love. And y'all already know if y'all want that love as well, you know, go tap in with me on Instagram at all facts. King KO, all lowercase. You're going to get your love. But let's get to it. And first and foremost, we got the Bang Measy, Fred O Bang, man, the Bang, man, you know, showing some love to Draco, the ruler, you know, telling him to get his rest and whatnot, and that's the biggest news, man, coming out of California, man, coming out of Cali, you know, that boy Draco, the ruler, lost his life yesterday, you know, around, in between 8.30 and 8.40, depending on which blog site you go look at or uh, news media outlet that released the information. And uh, pretty much, man, you know, Draco the Ruler, you know, got stabbed and lost his life, you know what I'm saying, on some craziness. But as we all know, it's just more always to the story. You know, Draco the Ruler had the Long Live the Great tour, you know, last night. And uh, pretty much, man, you know what I'm saying, that's kind of suspect after you know, lost his life. But of course, Draco the Ruler is another Empire artist. So... As we all know, these Empire artists is out here dropping like flies, man. They dropping like crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it just seems crazy. And it's always something right before they pass and that lets you know that something's finna occur. Which leads one to believe that the artists know this upon signing the deal. Like, something is not right. You know, Empire is out here playing chess while the rest of these people is playing checkers. They literally playing Monopoly pick them up and pick them off you know what i'm saying like that's what it is pick them up and pick them off give them a boost get them big enough 
for that uh, life insurance policy to grow, then pick them off. Knock them down. You know what I'm saying? That's all they doing. You ain't passing go. You're not collecting $200. We collecting that. And uh, you ain't going to jail. You going to H-E double hockey sticks or wherever you finna go after you pass. Like, that's what type of time they on right now. They playing a cold game. And it's just crazy that the law enforcement is not checking into this whatsoever. Like, y'all willing to check into a wife over, you know, her husband or her husband over his wife, you know, for a couple thousand dollar life insurance policy. We talking about multi-million dollar life insurance policies that these people are collecting almost every week now because we watch an artist drop every week from uh, from Empire. Now, this Draco, the ruler passing, didn't really catch me off guard. I was just talking to my partner like last week about, you know, something finna happen to Draco, the ruler, because he been, you know, getting slandered by the media for the longest. You know, they've been bashing him. That's how they do. You know, they, they basically season their kill before they actually make it happen. So that's all they was doing was seasoning him, fattening him up, you know, trying to ruin his life, making him suffer. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, it'll be perfect time and fit him to get rid of him. That's why they had him going down on all of these different, you know, M1 charges and stuff like that, man. Just, you know, ruining that man's life. They let him out, got him happy, got him excited and start messing with him again. Police pulling him over in the Uber and taking him to jail and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Had him associated with a lot of different beefs. So all they was doing was sautéing that kill, man. Getting ready to strike him down. And whether he knew it or not, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, man, I'm sure his spirit of discernment told him that something wasn't right. And somebody was out to get him. And you could tell that all in Draco the Ruler's face. Especially after he got out, he just always looked real nervous. Uh, real, you know, scared, intimidated. Like by the laws and whatnot. So I'm sure there's been multiple attempts on his life that hasn't come out publicly but will probably come out you know at a later time man so uh you know rest in rest in peace to that man you know always a sad thing to see watching you know these young black men lose their lives but y'all man y'all go pray for all the other artists that's on empire man most definitely go pray for them man because it's crazy stuff going on you know pray for mozzie man i think yg has a distribution deal with them as well pray for mozzie pray for all the rest of them artists my boy pt just got signed to empire so i'm gonna pray for him as well man stay uh stay safe bro you know what i'm saying and uh man man empire on some real crooked sour stuff now when this stuff occurs like this and all this stuff is going on all the concerts that happened last night i want y'all to go to the news and actually look on uh look at what's going on in the world or look at what type of bills they trying to pass because they always put all of these different functions on at one time to distract people away from the actual truth that's going on in the world so go check out the news and it's a lot of crazy stuff going on right now family but let's go ahead and move on believe next up man we got a whole another crip that passed away and associated with a celebrity Quando rondo's brother street brother his mud brother not his blood brother but his mud brother you know c4 or big c lost his life today you know what i'm saying uh you know he pretty much got gunned down you know this is uh this is crazy as well man there's some news that ain't there ain't too many people talking about you know what i'm saying just about mm, been about two hours now you know since he lost his life you know what i'm saying and this is just a sad situation man you got fans on there talking crazy you know what i'm saying and i tell y'all all the time man don't speak bad on people passing away talking about you catching bodies act like you're a grim reaper or anything like that because when you live by the gun you're gonna die by the gun that's how it goes bruh so when you brag about it that only makes your suffering even worse but y'all check out what he said right here before he even passed he says fill them bandos up with body Hashtag long live social, hashtag long live stuck dog, hashtag long live count up. Then, you know, he said, excuse the ashy spots to which, you know, someone commented and said, we might, uh, we might can't hit Quan yet, but we uh, definitely going to spend your block for his Whitaker looking boy. You know what I'm saying? And as y'all can see, man, you know, somebody sent him a threat because he said he'd been filling, you know, bandos up with bodies, man. And when you act like you living like that. And he probably is really, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna say act, but whenever you living like that, you're doing all that, you flexing, you flashing, you know what I'm saying? Things happen, man. And I don't wanna, you know, talk like that because it's so soon, you know.
know, after this man passed, rest in peace to him, most definitely. I'm not trying to use him as an example, but we got to use examples like these to learn how to live, man. It's a sad case that another young man had to lose their life. You know what I'm saying? Quando Rondo been flashing out all across Instagram, talking about what he going to do to people, saying that, you know, he going to be solo. Everybody is weirdos, talking about how you step on people, calling people female dogs. He been going crazy, man. So the energy is returning to him, the energy that he put out there into the world, and now his partner's passed away and he don't much want to talk about it. Next up is Lil Baby Dirk in India. And as you can see, man, Baby starts it out with saying he ain't BSing. Bet we the first to 100 million talking about they gonna be first, you know, out of all these rappers to 100 million, as you can see on the shorts when I shared it. But uh, Dirk goes ahead and proposes to India live in concert. And everybody's wilding over it, man. Well, as you can see, man, it was live and it was lit. Little baby was there to share the moment with them. You know, they like brothers at this point now. You know, they do everything together, man. So shout out to them. Shout out to India and Lil Dark, man, especially. Uh, for Lil Durk showing the youngest that are uh, influenced by him that it is okay, it is solid, it is cool for you to propose to your woman and be married. Ain't nothing soft about that. Ain't nothing wrong with trusting and loving a woman. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like Dirk is one of the biggest proprietors in actually uh, showing youngest like, man, there's still real women out here, man. So go ahead and you know get out there and test the waters man find you somebody to love man it's, it's it really it really a change your life man it'll change you in a lot of ways man but shout out to them man hopefully y'all live prosperous have a uh, rich and happy marriage man i am pro marriage you know what i'm saying i love seeing people you know actually getting married and whatnot you know what i'm saying but at the end of the day i do understand that this was a distraction so hey man i ain't gonna feed all my energy into it man y'all y'all have a great marriage now we got TBG, you know, Fred O'Bang out, you know, rocking out on tour for Lil Baby's tour, you know what I'm saying? As you guys can see right there, you know what I'm saying? So the, the venues are getting a lot bigger, you know, the concerts are getting a lot bigger. Fred O'Bang is doing a lot more, you know, with bigger artists in the industry as we already done touched on. He's literally a household name now. He's a superstar. There's nothing else need to be said about that, you know, you got to guarantee that, you know, they all are fucking their game right now, turning up for Tom Brady and whatnot, you know what I'm saying, they doing their thing and having fun, you know, living life like they supposed to be, you know what I'm saying, and this is something that we want to see, you know, as the supporters, we most definitely want to see, you know, everybody turning up, having their fun, going out to these venues and doing what they supposed to be doing, you know what I'm saying, as far as, you know, elevating the status, you know what I'm saying, so this is something, um, that I think is great. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, look at her. Oh my goodness. But hold up. She distracted me. Okay, yeah, man. Where was we at? My bad, y'all. I completely got lost. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this is something I think is definitely good, man. You know, yeah, the whole team going out, having a good time, chilling, you know, and doing what they need to do to rebuild that chemistry with everything going on as of right now. But I'm going to give y'all my other opinion as well, you know, to the whole ordeal that's going on right now. Because as we all started and stated that there was, you know, indictments under their backs. As Seven Hardaway shared this today, you know, which was, you know, the Tupac song, you know, uh, me against the world you know what i'm saying and also had a statement that he put in there as well i'm gonna read that real quick it says stood on what i believed changed my life then i changed a few dudes lives and i never been tricked out of nothing i'm setting examples with my o's the way i move out here is inspirational my little partners already know once they adopt the way seven move then they also can be tricked out of their spot now, I believe what Seven meant was they can't be tricked out of their spot. But anyways, man, maybe this is what the whole ordeal was about. Somebody believed that, you know, Seven Hardaway is being tricked for the fame, you know, by all his partners and whatever, you know, keeping it too real or whatever. That could be the situation. Or it could be, you know, what most of the consensus think, you know, everybody trying to, you know, detach themselves away from everything because the heat is getting too big. And this is a good opportunity, you know, to take a backtrack, take a step back and avoid you know each other right now come up with a plan to stay away that way the heat goes down you know what i'm saying and everybody can enjoy the riches and fame i hope that's what it is ultimately i hope what it is that's what it is 
you know, still a lot of shit that he's going back and forth on a daily basis. You know, this was one as well from Seven Hardaway where he says, the loyalty got to be in you. Uh, balling broke, free or locked up. You know what I'm saying? So that was a little shiggity that he sent as well. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, man, it's just going back and forth, man. You got, you know, you got one Thiezy coming back with more, you know, uh, this seemed like one from Osama where he said loyalty is, is, is priceless. You know, then you got Seven Hardaway all over his story. You know, send the shiggities, man. Everybody send the shiggities talking about loyalty right now. You know what I'm saying? And there's some distrust going on, man. It just seems like it's just a big, you know, thing of distrust. Everybody's sharing Lit Yoshi. You know, everybody can't wait for Lit Yoshi to come out, which we all can't wait, man. You know, hopefully Lit Yoshi can be the binder if there is any type of conflict that is actually going on as of right now. You know what I'm saying? But I most definitely see the plot, you know, to distract uh, the laws away. You know, this is a good way for the lawyer to be able to argue the fact that, you know, they weren't even that close, you know, with all of this stuff going on in the media about loyalty. So this is a smart move. Very, very smart move. Very, very smart. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, you know, this is what it is, like I said before. And uh, all of these shiggity stuff can stop, man. But anyways, man, Fat Chapo had a bloom release for his uncle that passed. Let it oh, oh, <laughs> Boulevard Bubba says, wonder why you don't see me. Cause when I pop out, you're gonna pay me, uh, pay to see me. In my mind, I'm famous, so I move like a rich dude. Cause I'm gonna be rich. You know what I'm saying? That's 100. Then he goes on to say, some of these dudes can't even spell loyalty. They don't even know the meaning of uh, the definition of it. Then he says, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Do you see yourself in Baton Rouge still going to the same clubs? Not me, my G. But as you can see, he sent a shiggity, you know, with his uh little post as well, man. So it's a lot going around. But next up, man, we got that man's trap land Pat. That's trap land Pat. No start bleeding off the Yerky, so y'all check it out. Don't take perks, guys. Show them the blood. Look, look. This is what perks do to you. Right, boy, stay away from the opiates. Right. This is why my dog couldn't go to the party, bruh. Right. Shit, bro. Then he says, man, thing getting laid out like a mattress, and he worried about if my nose still bleed. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, you know, from my years of doing yurks, like I used to do them, I, I don't recommend y'all doing them, man, because uh, you, you will get addicted, man. You'll start having withdrawals. Now, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to the nose bleeding thing, never had that happen before, but I can tell you how it kind of would have happened. You know, he probably took too much, got lightheaded. You know what I'm saying? He probably one of those people that uh, bleeds whenever he gets too hot. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of what happened to him. But that's why I tell y'all, man, don't mess with them drugs, man. They put stuff in them to keep you addicted and mess you up, man. So stay away from them. But next up, man, we got that man, FL Dusa, as he shares, you know, Lit Yoshi's post where Lit Yoshi was talking about he can't wait to be free again so he can ball out and ride foreigns. You know what I'm saying? To which FL Dusa makes a promise to him and says that he got you. I got you. I promise. He said he got him. He promised. So, you know, as you can see, uh, FL Dusa making a, uh, a promise to his partner that, you know, he gonna make sure that he ride foreigns again once, uh, once he touch down, man. So that's 100. But next up, man, we got Boosie and Webby. As they was at concert in Savannah, Georgia. The livest, littest concert that I've seen them have, you know, since back in the old days, man. So this one for real is like that old energy. Now, we're gonna talk about, and I'm gonna show you all the clips that I already have pre-recorded, you know, uh, in the next video. But I'm gonna show y'all a snippet to it all. And I'm gonna tell y'all, tune in tomorrow if y'all wanna see those, man. This video is already too long. And I got one more topic that I really, really, really need to touch on that y'all really, really, really need to know. You know what I'm saying? So, uh... Yeah, man. Shout out to Boosie and Webby, man, for doing this thing again, man. They rocked out and did a lot of stuff. We're going to dive into it in the next one. I'm going to show y'all this little clip of them chopping it up that y'all see right here. You know, pause on the screen. I'm going to show that to y'all, man, that way. You know, y'all can get the feel of everything, man. And just uh, tune back in tomorrow with your boy, man. That way, that way we can rock out. You feel me? The dumb one. Look at that. But last but not least, man, we got Tyrone Woodley and, you know, uh, whoever, Jake Paul. And, uh, man, I just wanted to say, man, you know, Tyrone uh, Woodley got brutally knocked out. You know what I'm saying? And I just wanted to say this, man, because I'm tired of seeing this, man. I'm tired of seeing people supporting Jake Paul in all his little fights. You know what I'm saying? Even though no one likes him. You know, they only watch because they want to see Jake Paul get knocked out. But what I'm telling y'all is y'all wasting y'all money. These fights are fake. There is nothing real about this fight at all. 
I was watching the fight and just looking at it like, man, this whole fight just looks garbagely fake. It's just acting, man. That's all it is. It's a form of taking your money. Jake Paul is not going to lose until people stop watching and they need to run up revenue. Now, if being entertained is your thing, man, and you watching to be entertained, go ahead and do your thing, man. But I'm just telling y'all, this trailer fight that's being put on by Drake Paul, all of these fights, they, they're not real. Ain't nothing real about them. You know what I'm saying? It's all acting. The people that they are fighting just fall out or let them win. That way they can get a big bag. They get the biggest payday of, them li of their lives just for getting in the ring with them. You know, and they probably telling them like, look, man, you ain't going to get paid if you don't let that person win, you know, and make him look great. So y'all got to stop following those fake fights from Jake Paul. That's all they are for real. But last but not least, man, we got that man EJ Earl Spence Jr. Earl the Truth Spence Jr. You know, that guy. As, you know, him and Jordanus Ugas, you know what I'm saying, are scheduled to fight, you know, for the WBA title. You know, him and the WBA super champion. And um, WBA approves it, man. So that fight should be happening around March. You know, we could be looking at Undisputed between Earl Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford by next year. You know, that showdown is going to be magnificent. The biggest showdown in the sport of boxing by far. No fight even comes close. And in my opinion, like I told y'all before, EJ is going to win that. Just like he's going to win this fight against Jordanis Ugas. The storyline is there because Jordanis Ugas is the last person to beat Terrence Crawford. You know, in the amateurs, uh, he just beat Manny Pacquiao. And they trying to correlate that story with, you know, how uh, that man Keith Thurman, you know, pretty much came off of injuries and lost to Manny Pacquiao. And then they're going to try to run the same storyline that, you know, Earl Spence Jr. came off the same two-year hiatus that uh, Keith Thurman went on. And uh, your Danis Ugas got the opportunity to beat uh, Earl Spence Jr. the same way uh, an old Manny Pacquiao beat Keith Thurman. You know what I'm saying? He got the same opportunity. Now, as we all know, your Danis Ugas is bigger and stronger. Uh, your Danis Ugas is one of the most technically sound boxers in all of boxing. He has a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful jab. He has beautiful footwork. His boxing ability is just beautiful, man. He, he does it to the best. I've been telling y'all, your Danis is a, an elite fighter. I wanted Crawford to fight him, but hey, it's not going to work out that way. It looks like Crawford's going to fight Keith Thurman. Uh, and hopefully, man, I want to see Crawford in there with Jerron Ennis. Like, real talk. I want to see that fight go down. Y'all let me know in the comment section if y'all want to see that one as well. Or, you know, at least Jerron in there, so in there with Keith Thurman or... Uh, you know, uh, somebody, somebody. Now, I would say, man, that, you know, this fight is going to be a landslide for Earl Spence Jr., but you can't put past the fact that, you know, he's been on a two-year hiatus, you know, due to injury, torn retina, the car wreck, all of that different stuff, man. So this is going to be a tough fight. You know, your Dennis Ugas is pumped up. He beat a legend already. You know, his stock is very high. And if he pulls this off, man, He's going to the Hall of Fame. You got to put him in there. I really thought that he beat, you know, uh, Sean Porter and Danny Garcia. But, hey, they didn't give him the nod. It is what it is. Before we get off the boxing subject, I do want to say this. And this is off the to a totally different weight class. Uh, there is rumors that Jared Anderson could be fighting Randy Ruiz. I would love to see that fight, man. Jared Anderson, in my opinion, is going to be a undefeated superstar at heavyweight. So uh, y'all be watching out for him, man. Go check out Jared Anderson if you haven't yet. Also, uh, in the world of basketball, Shea Gilgis Alexander hits another, you know, uh, game-winning step-back three-pointer. Well, not a game-winner. The last one against the Pelicans, you know, Devontae Graham hit the uh, the half-court shot. You know, two of the most clutch shots we ever seen in you know NBA history. That was the craziest, you know, uh, ending we ever seen. Most definitely the longest shot in NBA history from Graham and a crazy step back from Shea that was fully guarded that I don't feel like was covered enough. You know, he didn't get enough credit for that shot, but he came back and redeemed himself last night. You know, with a step back, you know, knocking down the step back over uh, Nicholas Patoon and the Clippers to send the Clippers home. And you know, and did his thing, man. Now Shea needs more credit for the. Uh, ability the clutch ability he has man he tied Lillard last year and now there's not much to anybody for him to compete with you know it's Stephen Curry Paul George and all them but they haven't particularly particularly my bad been clutch in their careers like they are not the caliber of clutchness they don't have that gene that Shea has 
Shea has been clutch since his rookie year. He showed it in his sophomore year with uh, Chris Paul. You know, he was uh, number five in uh, clutch scoring. You know, and uh, at, at the beginning of the year, he was number two at the Chris Paul. You know what I'm saying? And uh, ended the uh, season off as five. You know, you can't really have one and two on the same team. Somebody got to take the last uh, shot, and both people can't. So, he, no way he was going to finish, you know, above number five. But he, his percentage-wise, you know, 62% in that year. Last year, you know, he shot a true shooting percentage, 62%. You know, uh, number two, and well, number one, actually, because his, his numbers, his metric numbers were equal to Lillard's, who, were number, who was number one. So, he should have been a number one, too, but they put him down at number two. And since he's been in the NBA, he's been, you know, in the top 10 in clutch scoring. So that shows you what the kid is really doing. But y'all let me know y'all thoughts on all this down in the comment section. You know, make sure you like, make sure you, uh, make sure you subscribe, make sure you ring the bell icon, show your boy that love, spam the comment section, you know, all that good stuff there. Until next time, kings and queens, let me know y'all thoughts on all these different situations. And with that being said, I'm out. Believe it.